Can you guys smell that? Hi guys, no smell vision doesn't exist yet, but I am doing the next best thing here today. I am going to sample this set of four perfumes from Heretic Perfume. Uh, I keep seeing them online quite a bit and true story, the way that I came across them was they have a candle that is called This Smells Like My Vagina, which I thought was weird and um, kind of piqued my interest. I don't want the candle, no thank you. Um, but I did look at their perfumes and I'm like, these sound amazing. Um, they are a little bit up there in price, but if they are good quality, that doesn't bother me. So I'm gonna test out these four and it's technically five. They sent me a free sample. This one is called Flower Porn. So you guys kind of get the cheekiness of the brand. Before we get started, which by the way, the suspense is killing me. This arrived a couple days ago and has been sitting on my desk, tempting me ever since, but I wanted to keep my first reactions um, real, so I'm doing it for you for the first time on camera. And I also wanna mention just quickly some fragrances that I do like. Um, I feel like fragrance obviously is a very subjective taste. So the things that I do, or perfumes that I do like that you may be familiar with, um, Hanamai by the brand called Fleur is one of my favorite. It's sort of a wear everywhere. It's slightly floral, but it's not overbearing. One of my other daily favorites is Byredo's Gypsy Water. I feel like everybody likes that one. Um, that one's just kind of a clean, I would say maybe a little bit more of a green or earthy scent. And then um, one of my other daily go-tos would be Le Labo. It's their rose, I think it's rose 31. Yeah, because Santal's 33. So um, it's sort of a woodsy-ish rose. So the, the things that I like about fragrances is I do like floral scents, but they can't be just one note. So like just a straight up rose perfume, That's it smells like granny, it, it's nothing special. So floral scents for me, in order, in order for me to like them that is, um, is they need to have something else mixed in with them. So either a spice, um, something woodsy, maybe a little bit of a vanilla, um, something else so that it's not just one straight up floral note that is too sweet and kind of obvious. And then things that I don't like about perfumes. Anything that is too strong, and I don't mean strong in staying power, I mean strong as in just really aggressive smelling. Um, there's one that I think is probably my least favorite perfume out there is, um, what's it called? Angel. It's that one in that pretty blue star-shaped bottle. Bottle's really pretty, but the smell of that is just so aggressive. I can smell that from like across a football stadium. I'm like, oh, it's so strong. I don't like that. Um, another fragrance I don't like, just for reference point, not to sit here and bitch about perfumes that I don't like, um, is the Chanel Coco. Um, I don't like Coco. And then I think there's also another one, Mademoiselle. Um, both of those are too strong, or is it number five? It's one of the traditional Chanel fragrances um, that's been around for a really long time. It's just really, really strong. Um, so fragrances that have that strength to them where you can almost taste them in the back of your throat, I don't like that. So um, that's enough complaining about what I don't like. So let's get into hopefully what I do like and smell these guys. All right, so here are the four that came in the sampler set. Um, when you purchase these online, and by the way, I did purchase these, this video is not sponsored. You can pick the four that you want. And again, I did get an additional sample, so we are gonna test out all five of these. Mm -hmm. I have my Smell Palette Cleanser. I got some coffee grounds and put them in here. Hopefully I don't snort any of them up my nose. That would not be a cute video. I have a towel on the table so that I don't get perfume on it. And I'm gonna start out with the first one. This one is called Dirty Rose. And the other thing that I am really happy about with this is that these are um, sprayers rather than the things that you get typically from Sephora where you have to kind of pull off that janky lid and it's like perfume goes everywhere. It's hard to apply. So this is cool. I appreciate that these are in a sprayer. So um, I'm gonna test out Dirty Rose first and spray it on this. I cut some strips of paper towel. Try to not get it all over the place. Ooh, perfect. It's a nice sprayer. It doesn't spray everywhere. So. Um, two points already. I haven't even smelled it. So first impression, it hasn't gotten any dry down or anything yet. 
it's just a slight, lightly floral smell. Um, it's got a little something extra to it. It has um, maybe sort of hints of a little bit something green, but nothing um, very like woodsy, which is kind of what I thought it would be. All right, I'm gonna let this dry down for a minute and come back and sniff it again. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes and now this has a slightly more powdery scent and the rose smell has developed a little bit more, but it's not really, really sweet like a traditional like grandma rose fragrance. <laughs> um, so overall thoughts on Dirty Rose. I like it. I feel like it would smell a lot better on someone's skin once it kind of reacts with your body chemistry. And that's something else about fragrances is that they do react differently on everybody. I remember when I was in high school and one of my friends had a perfume that I really liked and I was like, ooh, I have to have it, you know, because everybody in high school has to be like everybody else. Um, so I got it and it didn't smell the same on me. So fragrance does smell different on everybody. But so far, Dirty Rose is a yes. It's a nice floral, but it's got a hint of something else, and it's not overbearing or one note like a traditional old lady rose fragrance. So on to the next one. All right, so Heretic's website describes the Dirty Rose fragrance as having top notes of lemon, pepper, bergamot, geranium, and clove. I think that the bergamot and the geranium definitely come through. That was sort of the greenish scent that I was trying to identify. Um, the heart is damask rose. Lena Lu, I have no idea what Lena Lu is. L I N A L O O. I'm gonna have to look that up. Do you guys ever feel dumb when you find something that you don't know what it means and then have to look it up? I do that sometimes just because I don't like not knowing what something means. That bugs me. Um, Black currant, and then its base notes: apricot, achieved with gamma undulacatone. A blend of essential oil isolates. There's a lot of science in this perfume, guys. All right, so the next one in the row is Jasmine Smoke. You guys are sort of sensing the theme here with what I mentioned that I do like. So floral, but with something else. So Jasmine Smoke sounds like something that I would be into. So what I'm doing between each take off camera is I'm moving away the already sprayed strips so they're not interfering with anything else. And I'm also snorting coffee grounds as a palate cleanser. So I'm ready to smell the next one. All right, so the very first impression of this is that it is very jasmine-y smelling in a good way. Um, for some reason, it's reminiscent of Tom Ford's Black Orchid, but it's not quite as patchouli-y, if that's a word. I know it's not a word. Um, I really like Tom Ford's Black Orchid, but once it starts to dry down, the patchouli or whatever the woodsy scent is that it has in it is too strong for me, and it literally just smells only like patchouli, which... I don't like patchouli at all. Um, if you guys don't know, I grew up in Ojai, um, a really tiny mountain town here in California. I don't live there anymore. Um, but growing up there, it's a very earthy granola community and people there wore patchouli in lieu of bathing. And so that really strong patchouli smell, just, I don't like it. So yeah, but this... It's jasmine mixed with a woodsiness that's a good thing that keeps the jasmine because jasmine, if you guys are familiar with it, can be a little bit sweet. It's kind of like an orange blossom, I guess, and or tuberose too. Uh, those are similar smelling flowers, but they can be really, really sweet and kind of strong. So the woodsy notes in this are really bringing it um, back down and keeping it from being too floral, which is nice but it's still floral and there's also a little bit of a powderiness to it. All right, so here are the notes on this fragrance off the website. It is, its top notes are pepper and cucumber, which is funny because I hate cucumbers as far as a food. And I also dislike cucumber because of that. Do you guys remember that old Bath and Body Works spray? I think it was cucumber melon. 
Um, back in the day, everybody wore that and it was so strong and overpowering. The cucumber is not a smell that I like, but I'm not getting any cucumber from this, so that's good. So the heart notes of this are Grandiflorum jasmine, jasmine sambac, orange flower, ylang ylang, tuberose, narcissus, and then the base. I think that's what's keeping it from getting a little bit too floral or sweet is mott tea and hay. Very cool. All right, the next one I'm gonna smell is flower porn. They have really great marketing. Like look at how pretty this little like sample flyer that came with it is. So super pretty, really fresh marketing aside from the vagina candle. I'm not sure I'm really into that, but um, anyways. All right, so on into this one. Let's see what it smells like. So first initial reactions from the spray is that I smell a lot of like a pink peppercorn type of a smell. And the good news again is that it's not too florally um, by the name of it, flower porn. I thought it was gonna be like in your face um, flower smelling, but it's so far it's not. I'm gonna let it dry down for a minute and then um, I will give you some more thoughts on it. All right, so it's had a chance to dry down just a little bit and it's still flowery, but it's a little bit soft. So maybe like a musk or a powderiness to it. I definitely like it. I feel like this would be a really nice summer fragrance. And I think that so far in the three that I've smelled, they've done a really nice job in keeping their fragrances um, a little bit more complicated, I guess would be the way I would describe them. They're not just one note, which I think is something that's really nice. I like to be able to smell the different layers of a fragrance. So, all right, so let's read what flower porn is supposed to smell like. Okay. Flower porn is a fragrance bursting with florals and herbaceous stems, so bright and verdant, it verges on illicit. Fresh cut orange blossoms, a hint of dewy roses, stiff flower pistols. See what I mean? How funny they are. They're super cheeky. Wet violet leaf, oozing lemon, and geranium blossoms. Yeah, they definitely made flower porn out of this. So um, I like this one too. All right, we're down to the final two. This next one is dirty violet. Don't want that on my thumb. Maybe because it's called Violet, but literally my first impression of this is it smells like dark purple. It really has a fantastic violet scent to it, but just like all the other ones, it's got a bunch of different notes. There's something that's definitely a little bit heavier in this one. So it's also a little bit woodsy um, and also still reminiscent of the Tom Ford, um, I think it's Black Orchid. Yeah, the, the Black Orchid. This is something that I would reserve for nighttime and especially when it's cooler outside. You guys know when you wear like a heavier fragrance and it's too hot and your body heats up and then it's just giving off this really heavy scent. So I, I definitely have perfumes that I wear only at night or only in the cooler months. And this would be one of those. It has like a sexy date night smell to it. And it's got a matureness to it, but I don't mean like the bad word of mature when you're like, I'm trying to not say old or geriatric, but it has a mature scent to it in a good way. Like it's grown up. It's not some little like slutty body spray. Okay, so here's what they say about Dirty Violet. The top notes are Violet Leaf and Jasmine Sambeck, so very similar smelling to the Jasmine Smoke. I would say you need one or the other, not both, um, if you were gonna get one of these. The heart notes, Oris, Turkish Rose Oil, and Patchouli. Um, the patchouli in this did not make me gag, so well done on that. And the base notes, Cedarwood, um, Labdanum? Labdanum? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Amberette and Cibarol. 
Okay, on to the last one, which is named Scandalwood. It's in partnership with Dita Von Tees, the burlesque dancer, if you guys are familiar with her. So I definitely have some great sex expectations of what this one's going to smell like. Um, so let's try it out without spraying it all over my table. All right, let's smell Scandalwood. Well, luckily it has very notable, like woodsy smells to it. Um, but so far they've done a nice job in keeping them on the feminine side. I like fragrances that can either be on the more traditionally feminine side or into sort of, I guess, unisex or multi-gender, however you want to say it. But when they get into the two traditionally masculine smelling scents, like it definitely smells like a men's cologne, I don't like that. So they have to keep the woodsy either gender neutral or on the feminine side. So let's see what I think. Okay, so final thoughts on this one. I think it's very, very nice. It reminds me a lot of two different fragrances. So the first one, it does remind me a little bit of Byredo's Gypsy Water, which is something I wear almost daily. So I like that. And then one of my other favorites that I didn't mention is Creed. Um, Creed makes something, I think it's called Silver Water. Yeah, it's called Silver Water that has kind of just a woodsy, piney, clean freshness to it. And that is how I would describe this. So it just, it smells clean. So when I was first thinking that it was gonna have like a really sexy, like musky, heavy scent to it, just by the name of it. And it really doesn't. It's something that's really, really clean and fresh and nice. This is something that would be a really nice everyday fragrance. Um, I like this one a lot. But let's see what their website has to say about what we're supposed to be smelling. All right, so top notes, coriander and atlas cedar. Yep. Heart notes, Bulgarian rose. I think that's what's keeping it from getting too masculine with all of the, the woodsy scents in it. And then it has base notes of sandalwood, labdanum. There's that word again, labdanum musk. So yeah, this one I think is probably my favorite. Let's put that away and give the rundown on these guys. So I think my first favorite would be sandalwood. So if I were to buy a full size one, it would be that one or possibly Dirty Rose, maybe both. Um, yeah, so Dirty Rose was my second favorite. I think Flower Porn would be a nice summer scent, so that would be my third favorite. And then the Jasmine Smoke would be my fourth favorite, and then the Dirty Violet would probably be my least favorite. Maybe it's the patchouli in there that I don't like. I don't know. It's not that I really dislike it at all. It's just, it's not for me. So I'm like that with um, wine as well. So anything that is just not my taste, like I'm not going to critique it too heavily. I can tell the difference between a wine that I just don't like and a wine that is shitty quality. So that's how we feel about these guys. They are all really excellent quality, um, but the Dirty Violet just happens to not personally be my taste. So final thoughts on these is that they are definitely worth the price i think it's about 65 dollars for a full size bottle so not too bad and then one of the really nice things about it aside from the cheekiness of its advertising and whatnot and it's kind of forward thinking ideas um, what i really appreciate about these is that you can really smell the quality and you can actually smell the notes of each of the ingredients that they say are in their fragrances so i really like these overall thumbs up rating um, from me. If you guys liked this video, don't forget to subscribe before you go. I do other fun stuff on my channel, um, basically things that are life interests of mine. So I test out bougie stuff that everybody's talking about every once in a while. I recently did a taste test on those um, sweet potato chips that everybody was talking about. I have some travel vlogs and a lot of clothing, fashion, personal style. Um, so yeah, if you guys like that type of stuff, don't forget to subscribe before you go. Thanks for watching.